What's up guys, Headphone Lou here, back with another uh, TV show review, and in this case it's going to be a, my starting of the review of the TV show Stargate SG-1. So with the recent release of Stargate SG-1 to Netflix, I thought I would give it another watch um, to see how it holds up, what I think of it, how the storylines progress and all of that. Um, mostly because my experience on Amazon was not necessarily a positive one. Um, I always found that for some reason, whether it was my device or how my internet was or even Amazon itself, I don't know, but it would never really save my progress really well or if they were changing stuff on the background and it would not save where I would leave off very well. So it kind of turned me off to rewatching the series because I always have to keep separate tra tabs on where which episode I finished. So with that being said, since uh, it's now on Netflix, I would thought I, I thought I would give it a chance and see how it holds up. But with 11 seasons of the show at about 20 to 25 episodes each, it would take me the better part of a year to finish it, assuming I watched an episode a day. So with that, I started doing a search for Stargate SG-1's key episodes, and I did find on a list on gateworld.net so essentially it starts with obvious stargate 1980 or sorry stargate from 1994 the film and then it lists by season the key episodes to watch which look like essentially what you would expect all the episodes that deal directly with um stargate commands interaction with the gould um replicators um the asgard asgardians ascendant beings the Ori and all of that from basically from season 1 through 11. It looks like a pretty good list based on my recollection of some of those episodes and listings of it and all that. So I recently finished season 1 and or basically from based on that it looks like a good enough list where instead of watching all 20 or so episodes per season it cuts it down to probably about a third to a half of that so it makes it more feasible to watch. So with that being said, I finished watching season one um, and I thought I would do a quick review just of where we're, where the episode, or sorry, where the season went and my thoughts and feelings on it. So overall, the season still generally holds up for the season. It picks up where the, a little bit after the, where the film left off, we find that there's a ghoul with glowing eyes uh, who... General Hammond assumes is Ra, but we come to realize it's another ghoul named Apophis, and that the ghoul have been claiming or using the Egyptian, what we know as Egyptian culture, to um, enslave the human race and essentially build their empires. And as we learn also, they use other races and cultures to enslave them and do their bidding. So humans are one aspect of that, and the humans in the galaxy essentially were seeded from the humans on Earth. So including so even the people of Abydos were people who were essentially descendants of the people from Egypt and were forbidden from uh, reading, reading and writing and all that, so they were unable to create that uprising. And that is found throughout the galaxy, so essentially as being the slave race, they are not given that history, so it essentially forbids them from uprising against their ghouled masters and lords. And a similar thing goes with the Jaffa, but they have a little bit more knowledge, mostly in that the ghouls are considered gods and are unable to be killed, and they have various technologies that they do not share much information about with um, the Jaffa, so... Essentially, by enslaving the Jaffa with infant ghouls, the Jaffa are tied to the ghouls as far as being able to live. So, from the, and that's all information that's uh, generally seeded throughout the first season, aside from SG-1 trying to explore the galaxy to obtain weapons, which, as the episode on politics uh, points out, they did not really do a good job of, but they did start building that relationship with other cultures questionably because they just learned that the aliens definitely exist even though they knew about it in the stargate film this is the first time we've seen aliens visit earth or even having an alien live on the planet in the form of teal so overall the first season does a pretty good introduction of dealing with that especially with uh, various other 
wrong feature or uh, factions of the government wanting to do tests on Teal, or even when we have like the Tolan show up on um, Earth, having people want to keep the Tolan around to quote run tests on them, but keep them in a quote safe environment. So it it looks of the and the closest thing I can say is concentration camps because they're keeping them again. They would be kept there against their will. So SG-1 is trying to not prove the Nox right that they're, even though they have weapons, that they're not what, not like other races or not even like the Gould or the how the Jafar um, told to behave. So SG-1 and even the form of Daniel Jackson proves to the Nox with the Tolan that even though their culture is based around warfare and dominance, not all of them are like that. So that's kind of the first step and it will definitely be one of those things that I know from memory will be brought up in the season two. So I'll touch a base on that when we get there. But essentially it's a good season to show that with the introduction of aliens, how the initial reaction is to them and all that. And that in general Hammond's um, basic instinct is right that they're in over their heads but with the president saying that it's something that if that even or even though senator kinsey thinks it's pandora's box that the president agrees that the potential to do good and learn about our universe like uh, carter agrees is something that they cannot overlook and now that they know that they're not that humans are not alone in the universe that it is their, not necessarily their duty, but something that they should do to explore the galaxy, to learn what's out there, and enhance the human life based on what they learn in the universe. So that's kind of where we leave off, especially with the finale that we're learning that there is going to be an Apophis by, or an attack by Apophis on Earth, and the season finishes with that being, that happening, or that view of the Gould Mothership approaching Earth, so... That's basically where we're going to pick off from se- pick up from season two, but essentially we have the um, setup for the rest of the Gould story arc. That the Goulds are the major evil factor in the universe, and that SG One not only needs to defeat them, but also do good in the universe and show that Earth uses or Earth values life and freedom over anything else, and that their military is there to protect human rights and not be paranoid people and rule out of fear but out of concern for every life on the planet so that's all there is for this particular review so i figure as i finish finish each season i would do a similar micro review and then when i finish watching the final season that i would either do a big review for the series or do a season 11 review and then a separate review for the whole season but I kind of, because Stargate SG-1 is my favorite TV show that I can recollect, I mean Star Trek is good, and of course The Mandalorian is also good, but as far as a long-running TV show, Stargate SG-1 is my favorite. And I mean, even considering how many episodes they did and they put out and how many, over how many seasons, that's a really long show, because even with the current time frame, current, you know, 11 to 12 um, episodes per season, that would put Stargate at about 22 seasons. So a a pretty long-running sci-fi show, in my opinion. And granted, there were some downtime episodes in the midst of all that, so I'm not going to say that they were all, you know, home-run episodes, but for the most part, from my memory of it, the show did a really good job of carrying through the story arc and... Also fixing some of the problems that uh, may have been in the Stargate film. So overall a good start to the series and I can't wait to rewatch the rest of the seasons to see how they hold up and um, what I think of them and see if I still like them. And even if my see and also see how my favorite episode from the, of the show from the second season how that holds up. Um, over the course of the rest of the show. So that's all there is for this particular review. So if you have any questions, comments, uh, concerns, or anything like that, you can find me on Twitter at PatelN01. The website is PatelN01.com for past episodes, subscription links, supporting the show, and all of that good stuff. And um, if you are a patron of the show, you can also 
check out a post that I uh, recently posted for an upcoming project that will be made public um, currently by December 23rd, so look out for that. But as a patron, you'll have access to that information already. But that's all for this review. Thanks for tuning in, and until next time.